Much of uh, my training videos are going to be interspersed with a lot of talking because there's a lot of things that I need to explain to you that I, they're not things I can show you because they're not methods and techniques. To, you know, it's, as I've said in many of my YouTube videos, it, it's mentality that makes a good horseman and makes a successful trainer. And uh, it's a concept that's really hard for a lot of people to grasp because they think they always have to be doing something, uh, particularly with trainers, you know, clients are paying you by the hour or month or day or whatever, you know, to accomplish things. And if they catch you just standing around with the horse, they're not going to be too impressed. But this is what I need to tell you, and this is extremely important. Uh, the first few sessions that we had with this guy were mostly actual training. But the last couple of times that we've had him in here, all we've done is just kind of hang out with him, just spend time with him. Uh, I actually inadvertently ended up teaching him uh, to come to me on command, but I'll, uh, that's not perfected yet, so I'll get a chance to show you how that's done later on. And it's part of leading, so I kinda, it's something I usually teach fairly early on. But you'll notice he's not on a lead. He's standing here. Uh, I can actually put my hand around the other side of his head. You know, we can touch his face, rub on him. We can do pretty much anything we want with him now. And he's quite happy to be here with me. Look at that. Nice guy, aren't you? Yes, you're a nice guy. But part of this was accomplished by simply doing nothing. Hanging out with him spending time with them and this is something that uh, is really important everybody thinks they have to be doing something all the time uh, a lot of really really good training is doing absolutely nothing at all other than just simply spending time with your horse just hanging out with them you know get to know them let them get to know you not put any pressure on them at all so that they start to figure out hey you know what hanging out with this dude ain't so bad maybe humans are all right in the case of this guy he's had very little handling so you know, he was very wary of humans to begin with. Uh, he'd never been mistreated that I know of. And, but, and, you know, he's come along real quick because of his young age and uh, no bad experiences. We just had to teach him that it was potentially a good thing to hang out with us, that we weren't always going to be putting pressure on him to learn new things and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we found a couple of nice spots for scratching that he really likes. And, you know, he seems to enjoy like that one right there. You know, and stuff like that, and, you know, that just reinforces that, hey, humans aren't so bad. And this stuff is really essential because if we develop a bond and he gets to trust me like he's doing, because it wasn't that long ago, we couldn't even touch his face. Now we can pretty much do whatever we want with it. And because of the fact that he now trusts us, he's more likely to do things that we ask him to do because he's not going to be worried about what's going to happen because he trusts me. If I'm asking him to do it, it's probably going to be okay. And that's important. So uh, it's one of those things I want to show you and talk about is the importance of doing nothing at all. You know, it's, it's an absolute critical part of training as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, even if it's not your horse, but if it's your horse, this is even doubly important because you need to build that bond and relationship with the horse that you're going to have for many years and you know he's still a little bit cautious you know and that's understandable considering his lack of experience in his young age you know his instincts are pretty strong in him still now always will be you can't get rid of their instincts to be, do certain things you can just give them teach them how to think that they can figure something out so they don't have to resort to their instinctual mode because that's something I've talked about before is how horses operate in one of two modes. They're either thinking or reacting. And reacting is generally not something you want. You want them to think their way through things and figure out that, hey, it's not, a, it's not bad, this is okay. Nothing bad ever happens, which is one of the reasons that you always want to make every experience with the horse as pleasant as possible, you know, uh, I don't want him to ever have a bad experience with me, whether I'm training him or just hanging out with him. I want him to figure out that, you know, when he's with me, absolutely nothing bad ever happens. And that's where it uh, is also critical to kind of watch the horse and see when it's getting nervous and tense. And don't cross the line. Don't push it to the point where it has a meltdown and freaks out about things. You know, that's really important. Uh, 
you know, you might get frustrated thinking, well, we still haven't accomplished what we want to get done for the day. But, you know, that's okay. There's always another day. And, uh, you know, a lot of people figure, well, I, you know, I have to spend so much time training with my horse. No, it's just going to, you know, change how long it's going to take before you get a finished product. But there's no rule at all. Uh, just ask a horse. There's no rule as to how much time you have to spend in each session or how much time in total. Um, horses don't wear watches, can't read a calendar. Time is pretty much irrelevant to them. So I have to consider time's pretty much irrelevant to me too when it comes to training the horse. Uh, I actually said that one of the reasons I bought him was so I could work at my pace. Well, fact is it's not really my pace, it's his pace. Because uh, that's the pace you need to have is your horse's pace. And how long it's going to take, well, it's kind of up to him and how he reacts to things. And, uh, you know, we're just going to go slow and easy and uh, not stress him out too much. You know, occasionally we're going to put a little pressure on where he's getting, you can, you'll be able to tell he's getting a little concerned about things. But, uh, you know, we don't ever want him to have a downright outright meltdown and you know, freak out and stuff like that. We want to try and avoid that. Uh, inevitably, it's going to happen once in a while. Uh, you can't completely avoid it, but at all possible, you want to keep an eye on the horse and try not to push to the point where it has an all-out freak out and stops thinking and goes into reacting because then it's not learning anything. So it's really counterproductive at that point to continue on. So th there are going to be times where you're going to have to just, you know, take the lead off and call it a day, put the horse back out to pasture and, uh, you know, Go at it again another day. It's not a big deal. You know, the, there's no rules that say you have to do things at a certain speed. Like I said, horses don't wear watches. And, uh, well, you can see what we've got going on here now, this little guy, how social he is, considering that a very short period of time ago, uh, he was uh, completely untrained and had relatively little handling in his entire life at four years of age. Um, I think their idea, they told me he was halter broke. <laughs> um, I, I noticed when I got him that uh, on the nose and the pole, the hair had actually been worn off from the halter that he had on. So the, their idea of halter broke was they managed to once get a halter on him. So uh, he wasn't even halter broke, uh, as far as I'm concerned, not in my definition. Uh, now I walk out into the pasture. Uh, he turns to me and waits for me to put the halter on. Um, so. You know, progress is being made, and it and a lot of it has been accomplished. Like this transformation here that you're seeing, uh, this wasn't done with methods and techniques. This was accomplished just by hanging out and spending some time with them, and that's what you're going to need to do with your horse. So um, sometimes doing nothing is the best training there is, okay?